Good afternoon, Holy Family. Before we begin Mass today, please silence any electronic devices. We have the following announcements. Today's readings are on page 630 in the Missal. The anointing of the sick will be offered after Mass. Please remain in the church if you would like to be anointed. Catechists are needed for the upcoming school year. Prayerfully, prayerfully, consider becoming a catechist. Contact Katie Love for more information. And see the bulletin and sign up on Flocknote for Mass on the Grass locations. There will be no Holy Family Women's Guild meeting this Monday. The September 9th meeting is Bunko in the evening. More info to come. And lastly, we are undertaking a new project, an online church directory. See the bulletin or your flock note email to learn how to sign up. Now, let us call to mind that we are in the presence of God. Lord, we ask you for the grace to celebrate this liturgy well. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. Can I tell you how wonderful it is after three weeks of no air conditioning in France to see all of you. <laughs> and we gather together today to thank God for all that the Lord has given us, and also to place ourselves in God's presence, recognizing we all need transformation. Let's do that now, asking the Lord to forgive us our sins and bring us closer to living Jesus. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh and the splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and your blood. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us yourself 
to heal us and make us strong. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring all of us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe that what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The whole Israelite community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, Would that we had died at the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt, as we sat by our kettles and ate our fill of bread. But you had to lead us into this desert to make the whole community die of famine. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will now rain down bread from heaven for you. Each day, the people are to go out and gather their daily portion. Thus will I test them to see whether they follow my instructions or not. I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, in the evening twilight you shall eat flesh, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread so that you may know that I, the Lord, am your God. In the evening, quail came up and covered the camp. In the morning, a dew lay all about the camp. And when the dew evaporated, there on the surface of the desert were fine flakes like hoarfrost on the ground. On seeing it, the Israelites asked one another, what is this? for they did not know what it was. But Moses told them, this is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord.
what we have heard and known, and what our ancestors declared to us, we will declare to the generations to come. The glorious deeds of the Lord and of God's strength. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I declare and testify in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do, in the futility of their minds, that is not how you learn Christ. Assuming that you have heard of him and were taught in him as truth in Jesus, that you should put away the old self of your former way of life, corrupted through deceitful desires, and be renewed in the spirit of your minds and put on the new self, created in God's way in righteousness and holiness of truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A 
reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. After he had fed the 5,000 with the loaves and the fish, when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? But Jesus answered them and said, Amen, amen, I say to you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father, God, has set his seal. So the people said to him, What can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. So they said to him, What sign can you do that we may see and believe in you? What can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert, as it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. So Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to all the world. So they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So as I said at the beginning, after being in France for three weeks with the Oblates, it's just so wonderful to be back here at Holy Family to, to be with all of you. Um, some people have asked where I was. I was at something called the General Chapter, which is the worldwide governing body of the Oblates. It's like Oblate Super Bowl. And it's where you elect the leaders for the next six years worldwide for the congregation. And thank God they sent me back to Adrian. So I'm so glad to be back here. Thank you. <laughs> And now my head's this big, thanks a lot. Um, but here's what I learned. Sometimes when I go to these things, when I have these flights back, I'm like, what did I learn from this? And this is what I learned. God doesn't always give us what we want. God always gives us what we need. God doesn't always give us what we want. God always provides us what we need. Let me give you a story about my time away to, to illustrate that. So my brother Joe and I, you know, he's a priest to eat at our parish mission. We're flying over to France for the general chapter, and we had two flights to take. And Joe is a magnificent traveler. He travels all the time for his job. He sees flying as an adventure. And we're sitting in the airport, and he goes, I don't worry about flying because I can't control it. God's in control of that, but God gave me a credit card, so we're going to be okay. <laughs> I am not a good traveler. I get anxious about flying, I get worried about long trips, it always seems I'm in the middle row of the town hour flight and I'm the one who's got to go to the bathroom and everybody on both sides is sleeping. I worry if the luggage is going to arrive, the sound changes in the plane and I think, did we just lose an engine? You know, like, what it happened with Boeing? You know, when it comes to international travel, I am gripped with anxiety. So while for Joe it's an adventure, for me international travel is the glass is half empty and somebody spat in it. <laughs> so we're at the airport, we're on flight number one, it's supposed to be two hours from here to New York, and we get a note that our flight is canceled. You can imagine how we both respond to this. I already told you how I responded, not my best self. Joe sitting in the chair nonchalantly pulls out his phone reschedules a different flight and then says, well, that was easy. There's a new wine bar down there I haven't tried in the airport. Let's go. 
<laughs> Four hours later, we get on our flight. We've changed airlines. We're now flying to Charles de Gaulle in the middle of Paris at the start of the Olympics. You can imagine how I'm feeling. Joe is thinking, I wonder if there's an Olympian on the plane. We get on the plane and in the shuffle, we realize we've been upgraded to business class. And as we're sitting there, this cart comes out with a woman in French. I don't know what she says, but I understood the champagne bottle as it went into my glass. Then a cart came down with food. And then about a few minutes and a couple glasses of champagne later, I said, I'm so glad that flight got canceled. <laughs> God didn't give me what I wanted. God gave me what I needed. But to take that seriously, now let's think about this. All of our life, we have a choice. And that choice that approaches us each and every day is between scarcity and sufficiency. Scarcity is me traveling. There's not going to be enough for everybody. We're not going to get what we need. Our flight got canceled. What will happen? Which is really me asking, in life, if something goes wrong, will anybody care? Will anybody help? Scarcity is the first reading that we had today, where the people of Israel are saying, why did you bring us out of slavery, God? At least when we were slaves, we could eat. We're going to die here. Don't you care? Scarcity to the people following Jesus in the gospel today because he fed them last week. And he calls them out and says, you're only here because I'm giving you stuff. Don't just follow me because you get what you want. Believe in me and I can give you everything you need. Sufficiency is different. Sufficiency says there's plenty for everyone. Everyone, including me, will get what we need. Sufficiency is how God looks at you and me each and every day, and is how he invites us to look at him. Or as St. Paul said in that second reading today, be transformed. Put away your old desires, your wants, because you don't think there's enough, and be renewed in Christ who will provide you with everything you need. But I got to tell you, living with sufficiency is tough. It's countercultural to us as Americans because our culture is one of scarcity. It teaches us we are never enough. That for us to thrive and survive, we need more stuff, more things, more experiences, more honors, more power. And we believe that getting these will make us happy. But that's a trap. We get the thing we wanted in two weeks or two minutes, we want something else. We get the honor or the recognition or the promotion, and then we're looking for the next one. We have our experience or our vacation or our good flight, and then we desire a better one. But God is not interested in giving us what we want. God will always provide us with what we need. And our challenge as Christians is to live this tension in faith. Faith in Jesus who tells us today, the work of God is to believe in the one whom God has sent. For I am the bread of life. Those who come to me will never hunger. Those who thirst in me will never, those who drink from me will never thirst. Because for those who believe in me and eat my flesh and drink my blood, which we will do a few minutes here at this altar, God will provide all that we need. As we approach the Eucharist today, may we take that to heart. The Lord doesn't give us always what we want. He always gives us what we need. May it be so, and may God be praised. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, 
born of a father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men, for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and began. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident that God provides us with what we need, we offer the following prayers. That the church be attentive to the afflicted and those in distress, ever striving to provide comfort and charitable assistance, we pray. That world leaders work toward a more just distribution of resources, we pray. That those who feed the hungry and shelter the homeless see in them the face of Jesus, we pray. That all who gather to partake of this Eucharist be reconciled to one another in God's grace, we pray. For all prayers that we offer up to you in the silence of our hearts, we pray. For those who died believing in the resurrection, we remember Francisca Torres, Jacob Mendezabo, Carmen Navarro, who died recently. We also lift up in prayer Doris Sarin. Grant them eternal peace, we pray. Lord, Lord Jesus, you are the bread of life, the one who provides us with all that we need. And so we ask you today that in union with the Holy Spirit, you take these prayers and present them to the Father, for you are God who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please join in our song for the gifts, number 373, Beautiful is Your Love. Is your 
your sacrifice. Body broken here, that I might have life. Take everything I own, let me be yours alone. So Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. For it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. For as we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up 
for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Francis de Sales, Saint Catherine of Siena, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Earl our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned here before you, and in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance into your kingdom. For there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. At the Savior's command, informed by his teaching, together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, 
Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Lord, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer each other a sign of that peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am I not worthy, worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those of you at home, we offer the following prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Sacrifice. 
I'd like to invite all those taking the Eucharist and the sick of the homebound this weekend to please come forward at this time. Lord Jesus, you are the bread of life, the one who provides all that we need. Send your love and your grace and your healing into these ministers as they go and share your body and blood with all those sick in our community. Bless them, love them, for we await the day they can return to us in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts. And in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let me just be seated for one quick moment. So many people have come up and said, what is the status of the other church? What is going on? And because rumors happen very quickly, I just want you to hear it from me. The church will be fixed soon. Not like Jesus is coming soon. We don't know when that is, but, but soon. So in the back of the church, the containment is up. The balcony's been fixed. We're working on some of the pews. And when you're dealing with asbestos, it's cleaning up dust and then making sure the air is fully dust free. As soon as all that happens, I will let you know and then we will resume the regular mass schedule. So as for this upcoming week, again, masses continue here, but soon. <laughs> Second thing, you know, I, I want to give a very big thank you to Father Tom Helfert for coming and helping while I was in France for those three weeks. He literally walked on the job knowing a little bit and did an amazing job, and he is here today. So Father Tom, thank you. <laughs> And the best part for me is he's going to be staying with us and regularly celebrating Mass here at Holy Family. And I'm thankful to God for such a gift. So let's stand and conclude our liturgy today. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your life. We have seen, we will not hide away.